Hey, Steve Minotti here. Before we get to our junkyard crawl video for today, just a heads up, on October 1st, if you're in the Durant, Oklahoma area, I'll be there live at Spanky Acider's inaugural Freedom Choctaw Collector Car Auction at the Choctaw Casino and Resort Event Center, again, in Durant, Oklahoma, where a whole bunch of cool collector cars are gonna get sold, many of them at no reserve, and I'll be on the stage live doing commentary. One of the best cars and most special cars in that event is gonna be the actual 58 Chevrolet Impala, fully restored, that was once owned by Peggy Sue Geron. Yes, that Peggy Sue, the star of several Buddy Hall songs. Pretty, pretty, pretty Peggy Sue. That was her 58 Impala. That car is going to get sold at no reserve again on October 1st at the inaugural Freedom Choctaw Collector Car Auction in Durant, Oklahoma, October 1st. Be there if you want to take a shot at that car and just check out a great auction. Okay, let's get right into the junkyard crawl here at Berniston Auto Wrecking. Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the junkyard crawl at Berniston Auto Wrecking with a 67 Dodge Coronet 440. Don't confuse this with a 440 powered Dodge Coronet RT, which was in its first year of 1967. Now, the Coronet nameplate arrived in 1949 and was used through 1959, but was abandoned from 60 through 64. There are no 60 through 64 Dodge Coronets. They were all called 330s, 440s, or Polara 500s, or darts. So, Polara came, or Coronet came back in 1966. And again, this is basically the body style. Now this one here is a Coronet 440, two-door hardtop. Now the 440 series, again, was the mid-level. There was the Coronet Deluxe, Coronet 440, Coronet 500, and again, the RT at the top. Now one thing you could get with the Coronet 440 was a wagon. Uh, you could get a convertible, a four-door, but no two-door sedans uh, in the Coronet 440 lineup. Let's take a peek at the back of this thing. It has been pretty well hammered by rust, but the original gold paint still kind of in effect right here. You gotta love sort of the deltoid themes on 66 and seven Dodges. And again, a two-year life cycle, 68, a whole different design. Replace this with what they call Coke bottle styling. Massive trunks on these things, prone to rust. You know, we can see definitely the spare tire well on this thing. Yeah, it's not horrible. Oh gosh, somebody put Bondo on the spare tire floor, which is not a, not a good structural de design or idea. Oh, look at this muffler, this is pretty crazy. This is a, uh, a Sears muzzler muffler right there. Remember the Sears muzzler? The idea was that it would muzzle your engine's noises, but this one here has been demuzzleized. <laughs> Again, in the end, rust always wins. Now here's the thing, I mentioned this one is a hard top. And while these are cool and often seen with Coronet RTs, which are always two-door convertibles or hardtops, this is the 1967 Dodge uh, lineup brochure with Pam Austin and the Dodge Rebellion, which we see right here in effect, the Dodge Rebellion wants you. Uh, again, this is a really cool brochure, the full line, the Dart, the Coronet, the Polar and Monaco, and of course the Charger, new for 66 and 67, of course. But inside we see the difference in roof lines on the left, that that's the two-door hardtop, and we notice too that it has sort of those fake ventoids in the quarter panel. Uh, and that would, of course, be the hardtop in the Coronet 440 and 500 RT lineup. On the right-hand side, these are Coronet Deluxes. Notice that boxy two-door post top and the lack of a ventoid thingamajig in the corner. And again, these two-door posts like this, never available in the Coronet 440 or 500 or RT, strictly Coronet Deluxe base model stuff. So again, those are the ones you kind of want. But uh, going a little further on this, uh, this did have the optional vinyl top. And inside, this one was a column shifted automatic. And that's the Torque Flight, which is a good transmission for its time. But again, this is a column shifted car with a bench seat, no buckets, although they were possible on the uh, Coronet 500. In fact, they were standard on that. But speaking of the Dodge Rebellion of 1967, I don't know about you, but I'm a big model car fanatic. And this is a model kit of the Dodge Rebellion, which of course is a play on Dodge Rebellion and Revell, the model kit manufacturer. But the funny thing about this model is that it's kind of weird. It never was a real car. It was the dragster frame from Revell with the 62 Dodge Dart four-door body adapted to it. Kind of a crude little model. I gotta say, I bought this thing on eBay for a small fortune, but you gotta love the Dodge Rebellion. This is Dodge, or Revell's effort to take advantage of the Dodge Rebellion, 1967, and use up an old tool. In fact, this is the model that it was based on. This is an original Revell Dart four-door. And again, this is a Dart 440 series right here. 
And this is the Dodge Revelion. They took the basic body, they cut the back out for a driver, and up front, they put those little holes in the bottom and the engine was covered up for the funny car effect. So again, the Dodge Rebellion begat the Revel Revellion. Now we know. Okay, with the model car stuff out of the way, let's get back into this 67 Coronet 440. Now the thing with this one is, again, it is not a high performance model, speaking of models, but rather we see the VIN and we have a D in the fifth spot. Okay, it's the 273 two barrel, which was 79 bucks more than the base 225, but for $24 more, you could have got the 318 uh, LA engine, which had uh, 230 horsepower, another 50 more than the 180 horsepower out of the 273. So you pick your poison. So this wasn't a big block car. And again, we see V8 right here. And that's what you would have on any of the two barrel engines. 383 four barrel or the 426 Hemi would always have a, a 426 or a, four, a 383 logo right there. Of course, the RT would have 440 Magnum right there, but this is not an RT. But looking under the hood, we see the standard uh, master cylinder, not power assist. This is a drum brake car. You could get power discs on this car for an additional 70 or $54. Uh, power steering in effect on this one. That was a $73 upcharge right there. Kind of a big monster of a cast iron steering box. Uh, the aluminum manual box is lighter and for me, more desirable. But again, this is a fairly you know, well-equipped, probably a, a secretary type car. Now something we see up here, 1966 and seven, two years for this body style. And uh, 67, they redesigned the grill. And here is the headlights around 1966, 1967. You can see they're similar but not the same. Again, 66 Coronet, 67 Coronet. And so this is how Detroit facelifted their cars from year to year. Uh, part of the planned obsolescence that was uh, part of the thing initially started with General Motors, uh, Alfred P. Sloan in the 1920s, you know, basically make new cars look like old cars every year and keep selling them. But anyway, this is a 67 Coronet 440, not a 440 power plant, again, a 273 in this one. Uh, in fact, we have another one right there. That is a Coronet 440 four door. If you want to see that one, come back tomorrow. We'll do a full video on that. Uh, in the meantime, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Again, that 444 door is going to be a full time.